thing about bad guys is you can you you have more freedom to do things, mm-hmm. but you also but there's never black and white in anything. Was when I play a role, whether it's a good guy, or whether it's a bad guy, it's never black and white. It's always gray. There are things that a bad guy will do because he justifies himself doing it because he believes that's the right path. Is that bad or is that just because he believes it? Hitler didn't think he was a bad guy, right? He was doing it because he believed he was doing this. Is we all look at it and go, the guy's an absolute nutcase, and and and, yeah. and the same thing with the good guys. Same thing with when I played Duncan McLeod. Sometimes he, you did things that you're like, well, eh, that was a little bit on the edge. You know, was that a really good thing for you to have done? Would you so would somebody else have taken the same path? You know, uh, should you have? So there's certain things that is, it's never, and that's one of the producers, a guy called uh, Ken Gord on Highland. He, uh, that's what he, he was always said. He says, it's never just black and white. It's always gray. Listen to the vibes. Welcome everyone to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm going to start things off a little different today. I'm going to try to make this story as brief as possible. But, you know, if you know me, um, I used to do nothing but paranormal stuff and uh, things changed and I have to credit a certain person for that, which is my guest today. Uh, I, I met him in, uh, at a, uh, a show in Cedar Park, Texas. And how do I not ask somebody like that to be on my show? And I didn't know how I was going to incorporate that on a paranormal podcast, but it worked. Uh, at least I think it did. I, I, I'll get his opinion here in a moment, but <laughs> he inspired me and I felt like I needed to pass that on. And so we started listening to the vibes. We bring on positive folks and ins- inspirational people and motivational people trying to help one another. And uh, like I say, I, I credit everything to him. And he has opened up a new world for me, and I thank him so much. And he's been gracious enough to come back and and join us again. And the great Adrian Paul, if I didn't mention that before, uh, you know, he's, man, he he, actor, uh, uh, father, uh, a sword (laughs) expert. I mean, you you do a lot of stuff, man. And uh, you got some events coming up here in Texas. Yeah, yeah, I've got a... I mean, I think sometimes uh, everybody's life is different. Everybody has a different path to, to tread. And my life has been one of constant change. You know, I've, I've been, I was a dancer. I worked in a bank. I was a choreographer. I would, uh, you know, I, I I was an actor. I've been a producer. I've been a director. I've, you know, and, but it's, that's me. That's my thing. It doesn't mean everybody's going to be the same. Um, and I just, I enjoy that change. So, and I think that's the one thing a lot of people don't have because we talked earlier on about fear, about fear of change. And sometimes we stay in a relationship or a job longer than is actually necessary because we're afraid of what m- we might not find instead of positively going out there and saying, this is what I really need to make myself happy, to make my spirit my ho- myself whole. And, you know, if you don't have that, then you become, it starts rotting you from the inside, I'd, I'd say. And that, that to me is what my life, my, that's what makes me happy is creative stuff. Uh, and, you know, I actually looking at my wall right now, I, it says when you find yourself stuck, it's your job to get yourself unstuck. <clears throat> and so that's, you know, really, so everybody's different. Everybody has their thing that makes them happy. And a lot of people don't have that, unfortunately, because they're, they're afraid of following the thing that they really want to follow. Well, you know, when I first got married and I was 19 years old, believe it or not, uh, I was working at a, a laundry and then went on to work construction. Found myself being a, an exterminator and uh, I, I worked at a bookstore and Eventually, I ended up working for the city. I worked in uh, in public works, mostly in the water department, and spent over 20 years doing that. But it wasn't really what I wanted to do. But, you know, I've 
kind of felt like I was stuck. I mean, everybody's telling me, oh, you got a great job, great benefits. And yeah, it was a great job and the benefits were wonderful, but I was never happy. And it actually took me having to uh, medically retire to find what I really love doing, which is this. Right. And uh, I I encourage people to follow their dreams. I know you got to have something to fall back on, but man, try at least try. You know, I want I want to I want to I want to talk about what you just said about dreams because, and this is going to sound very strange, because when you're a kid, you dream of something, whether it is being a doctor, being an actor, mm. being a fireman, whatever. But those dreams never come true the way you expected them to. And the reason right. why is because there's life. And a lot of the time around the, around certain points in time, you have a decision to make, whether you go this way or whether you go that way. Doesn't mean your dream is not going to come true, but it will never come true the way you imagined it because of the decisions you make. So therefore, that means whoever you are today is the person you are because of the decisions you've made. And that, I think, right. is very true, you know, and... I'm, you know, I'm constantly trying to figure things out. I, I've made huge mistakes, and so, you know, I, do you learn from them or do you just say, oh, that didn't that didn't work, and you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna follow that. So, I think your dream, you know, again, your path has been slightly different than somebody else's, mm. but you followed a dream, but it was never what you thought it was going to be when you were ten. That's true. I guarantee thought- you. I thought I was going to work for Marvel Comics when I was ten years old. Yeah, but now, but look at look at it. Okay, so here, here's here's you thought you were going to work for Marvel Com- Comics. That is a creative entity, a creative thing, something that is you're doing something now which is creative. So mm. you, the, my point is, you've kind of proved my point in a sense. Is you had a dream to be a creative of some sort to to make people happy by by something that was. Um, takes them out into another world. Now you're giving people inspiration from this podcast that you're doing. So I think it might, as I said, it didn't follow the dream you originally thought, but it did end up on the same timeline. Right. And you know what else helped me is I lived in a little town outside of Houston. It's called Baytown. Uh, actually we're famous for Gary Busey, believe it or not, (laughs) (laughs) but I don't know something about living there and even the surrounding areas. It just seems like I was stuck and I was never going to grow. And when I got remarried, my wife has family and friends up here around Austin. And when we visited, I said, you know, I think this is where I am. I'm supposed to be. And end up getting a job working for the city up here in Cedar. Well, when we lived in Cedar Park, and I'm tell you what, the move, even though it was scary, and I was leaving behind my family and friends, I I've grown so much being yeah. here. It's expanded yeah. me so much. It just I took a chance, and it yeah. and it worked. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's the thing. You didn't let fear stop you from making that decision. And so many people have that choice, but they they don't make that step. And another thing is the people that try to discourage me from moving up here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Those are the obstacles that, you know, the, the, the path of life, you walk along that path, but you're going to fall off it from time to time. There's going to be boulders in the way. There's going to be streams in the way. There's going to be broken logs in the way. And you've got to step over them or move around them and keep on that same path. And so that's what people do. They, they constantly say, you know, you should be doing this or don't do that because of that. And mm-hmm. in reality, it's your life, not theirs. Well, you think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're scared to try to, to do what they really want to do? Very probably. Jealousy. Did you get a lot of support from your family and friends when you decided to to do what you wanted to do um my parents were actually pretty good with me i mean you know as i said i i started off i worked as uh in a bank i worked as a custom pricing assistant in a pharmaceutical company i worked in a um a recruitment uh, agency to get people jobs uh i then became a model uh and they were like yeah okay go ahead and do it um the one thing 
when I decided to become an actor, I'd already acted when I was younger and I'd done school plays and stuff, but nothing really, I didn't, I didn't get the bug until I came to California. Um, the real bug, I'm talking about the thing that in my gut said, this is what I've got to do. And I remember the first job I ever got, which was on a show called the Colby's, which was a dynasty uh, spinoff. Right. And I called my mom. I said, mom, this is amazing. He's, you know, I've got this job. It's going to pay me you know, X amount. And which wasn't a lot at the time, but anyway, She's like, and she barely said anything to me. She said, just remember, you keep your head on your shoulders. You just keep your feet grounded, okay? This Hollywood thing is, and it kind of hit me for a minute, but then, you know, in a sense, she was right. And, uh, you know, the support, they were like, okay, you can do it, but whether we like it or not, it's not our our job to do that. And I think that's what parent, a lot of parents make the mistake of imposing what they wanted to do on their kids. And mm -hmm. my friends, well, I mean, my friends, I've gone 2,000 miles away. So, you know, I I didn't really have those friends. The friends changed. And you know, I, I also believe that there's a certain period of time, certain friends stay with you for life just because there's still some sort of exchange that you need to have with them. There's some sort of reciproc re reciprocity, <laughs> if I can say that properly. <clears throat> that you need to share. They need something from you and you need something from them. When I, and I'm talking spiritually, I'm not talking about, you know, money or anything like that. And a lot of the time when that changes, like your desires, your wants, your needs, etc., change, and they change, you no longer have that sharing that you need between you. So mm -hmm. you don't become friends anymore. I, I have friends I've not seen for many, many, many years because we're on a different paths now. But at the point in time, we needed each other. We were the best buddies. We would go out. I mean, I, I could probably, I can't name hundreds, but there have been hundreds of people in my life that I've spent two months with, a year, you know, that we had a great time. We spent time and something at that time was something I needed and they needed to share so that we could, could move on with our lives. So I don't think necessarily that we can stick with everybody for throughout our entire life. Very few people, I think, uh, that you actually remain really good friends with that you can pick up the phone and go, "Hey, how are you?" And you pick up where you where you left off. I've I've found that even though I try to stay in touch with some of my friends back in the Houston area, it's just it's so difficult. But I also had to leave some of them behind. I I call it I love them from afar, right? Because right. they they still act like they're in high school you know partying drinking well, they, and their the needs, their and... need, exactly they're not they, they won't grow any further and that's right. what happens you've changed and grown therefore your needs for each other are not no longer the same and that's why you have to leave them behind because what are you going to do how do, how do you discuss what you want to do i mean I, I spoke to a friend of mine recently and he's having some troubles with his wife and that and he says we're just talking about different things now than we used to and that happens in marriages as well the, the whole idea, of, uh, uh, and I don't want to be get religious in, in this at all, but in, in the Bible it says, or in marriage it says, now you become one. And I think mm -hmm. people make a mistake in believing that you're, you've just taken away half of who you were when you met the person. The, the likes, the needs, the excitement, the extra um, stuff that you had was interesting to that person when you first met them because you bring all this information when you cut that off and you no longer have other things you do, the relationship sours sometimes because you're now talking about the same things, whether it's your kids, you, the house, whatever that you're talking about the same thing. You're not bringing anything new to the conversation. I didn't go, I went out to see my friends for instance, and, or, and I saw this thing happen and I read in the news and this stuff, you bring that to the conversation. You can have a conversation that's what you bring as as a person you can't just cut off half half of who you are and what i've done is the the people that i call my friends now who i mean they are my friends they are successful or they're on that path to success and i surround myself with them because i i, I get a kind of a piece of them i guess you'd yeah. say and they they're helping me to grow instead of being that same person I was back then 
getting remarried, uh, my wife I have now, she has helped me in so many ways. Number one, she's opened up a new world with the traveling we've done together. And number two, I had, I know you didn't want to really get religious, but I had stepped away from God and she's helped me to get back on my spiritual path again. Mm. And which makes me want to help other people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, Religious is a tough, tough subject because everybody has a different, you know, opinion on religion. And I, you know, we all, the funny thing is, a lot of religions around the world are based in the culture that you live in. Mm-hmm. You, whether it is Islam, whether it is Christianity, whether it is Judaism, that the, they grew up <clears throat> in that religion, and therefore their thoughts and beliefs are around that religion. <clears throat> the majority of people in that religion want to believe in a higher spirit and a higher life and goodness. There is a minority in every religion. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying because there are some Christian folk that I've heard of that are not Christian. They're just out for a good time and they use it. Same thing mm-hmm. with Islam. They do the same thing. Same thing with Judaism. They do, there is a minority in that that use it for themselves. So, but in reality, we all want the same thing. We want a higher spirit. We want something to lift us. We want something to believe in. And and so. You know, for me to say, oh, that that's wrong in that religion, it's not because you grew up in that belief and you're believing, you know, I, I, I'll give you an example. I, there was a a singer that some people may remember uh, called Vanity. She was with Prince. Oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. She was on Highlander. She was a born again Christian. And she was trying to convert me. And we had many discussions about and I said, well, can you tell me about the other people that are good are trying to do good, but they're not part of your born again system. And she said, well, she, many, many will come, but few will be chosen. To me, that's, that's just taking the road and not really thinking about what it is that I can't say that somebody, because they believe in a different God, that they're a bad person. But the Buddhists are some of the uh, kindest uh, uh um generous people that i've ever met well they're not they're not part of this just because you believe it is because it's a different way of you believing i i i i i always respect the person's belief as long as what they're doing is is positive or it has a a, a result that is loving and true and wants to move people forward we can talk about politics politicians i will never ever respect a politician that uh, de- is, is degenerate or talks badly about people or lies or does because that's not who i i want to look up to and it's not who i want my kids to look up to just because you have a you're republican or democrat or whatever if you are that you behave like that that's not who i want to follow Mm-hmm. And so to me, I, I so to me, it's about the person. It's about who, what you believe in, not about money, not about how much you have. Because at the end of the day, when you're dying, you don't need more money. You need more time. Right. And that's something you can't buy. No, you can't buy that. And at the end of the day, you got to look back and go, okay, what was my life? Oh, I had all this power. I had all this money, all this. But did I do something that was good? Did I always, did I make a difference in, in people's lives? You know, what is that? What is the, the thing that has inspired me to inspire others? Or that that's your true legacy. You know, there's, there's an interesting, um, you know, Kanye, Kanye West is, right? Right, right. Right. So Kanye, I mean, he's, I mean, he's destroyed his, his uh, image, I think, at this point. But a few years ago, he was doing a concert and um, it was an amazing concert. The, fans were ecstatic about it afterwards they came out it was great it was this and that and they said you know that old guy on the piano he's going to be he's going to be famous the old guy on the piano was paul mccartney from the beatles the biggest Mm -hmm. the biggest band in the world for generations but people today didn't know who they who they were the the music lives on but the names do not what you do lives on what you had does not so 
that's my point. My point is you, you can't expect to um, have a, a legacy of things. It's a legacy of, I mean, the, 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 the spiritual leader who people always know of, they might not know a lot about, is Gandhi. And Gandhi mm -hmm. was, what, 30, 40, 50 years ago? You know, you know about, like yeah, I mean, now, I mean, he died in, I think, was it the 80s? I think something like that. But his real revolution was in the 60s, 60s and 70s. Uh, no, actually the 40s and 50s, you know, where he was, I think it was the 40s and 50s. But, you know, there's a lot of people that Mother Teresa, I mean, you're going to know who Mother Teresa is and what she did and what she stood for. Right. And she was a simple woman and just went around just helping other people. The people I, I meet in, in my, um, my, my charity. The, the organizations I meet, they do it not because they want money and fame. They want to do it to improve the lives of others around them. And that's the legacy they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking about legacy on my last interview. And I thought about it, you know, yeah, I want my legacy to be that I've tried to help other people. But I also think about my my kids and how they in spite of the way i was when i was younger i was a terrible father i was drunk i was a drug addict uh, i i treated them badly but they um they succeeded anyway and they've inspired me to 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 stay on the right path to be the person that i am right now and when i see how they treat others and always wanting to help other people and putting other people a, a, ahead of their needs. I think, and maybe that's part of my legacy. It is. It's definitely your legacy because that's what they will remember. And that's how well they take into the future for their kids and their grandkids and, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, we're living in a strange world today because, you know, I don't know how much longer this, this world is going to exist in the form that it has the dinosaurs were wiped out because of a meteorite we might get wiped out because of ai you know um yeah that's so, that's scary yeah it is <laughs> i mean you got you got something called chat gpt right now which talks to you like a person uh -huh. it will do whatever you want it to do it write essays for you etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know there are i was in a restaurant the other yesterday you know and the robot comes and gives us the drinks and talks to us it eventually right. AI, which is artificial intelligence, will have the intelligence um, to make its own decisions. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? They're like, well, we don't need this. We don't need these humans. What do we need them for? You That's know, right. We make, we're quicker than them. They're smarter than them. We make quicker decisions, and we can calculate quicker. It's the same as that. What was that film? There was a film with, I think it was Matthew Broderick, uh, years ago about this computer taking over the world and figuring out, you know, why... Uh, the humans actually needed to exist. And finally, he gave it a calculation that basically stopped it from blowing the entire world up. So, I mean, but we're not far off that at the moment. Was Another, that the War Games? Yeah, was it War Games? I think it was something, something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or have you seen Eagle Eye? No, I haven't seen that. No. Oh, that's scary in itself. That This computer figures out that... Uh, you know, I forgot the exact premise, but it figures out somebody in in Congress or something needed to go. And so they acted like a human calling this guy on the phone and this lady on the phone tell him you need to do this or we're going to, you know, like kill your child. And there's a whole lot to explain about it. But how this machine figured out to do all this stuff. How how do we know that's not going to happen here yeah. in the near future? It's scary. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are humanoid robots now that can start to converse with you as if it was mm -hmm. a person. So you're asking them questions. They're talking back to you. They're making human faces on them. They're, you can look it up online. And so yeah. there's a, where it will go, I don't know. Um, uh, sometimes I think we lived better when it was simple. Yeah, you know, something about the world today is it, it it's kind of geared around just the the self, you know. There's nothing yeah. about serving others. It's about look at me, it's my needs, it's what I want, and it's also about leisure. 
you know, just you go to um, you go to the store and you don't even need to go through the checkout lines anymore. You just you scan and go yourself or yeah. some of them, they have uh, some kind of chip or something on the on the products and you could just walk through the door. That's Amazon. Yeah, that's Amazon. That's all in uh, those stores like Whole Foods and places like that. Mm. And that, that'll happen much more often because what that's going to do is going to get rid of the need to pay people. And right. you can see today everybody's having a hard time to actually get staff. I mean, I, I've talked to numerous people in various industries all saying we can't get good staff. We can't get because nobody wants to go and work. And, you know, eventually it will get soft for doing that. Yeah. Oh, it's a different way of making money. All the people that are making money today are the YouTubers, are the Instagrammers, all those people. <clears throat> and it's a it's a massive world. That's it's, it's 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 changed, and it will continue to change, and then it will change again. Somebody else will come up with some other idea that it will change the world and that how it's how it's working. I mean, you take cryptocurrency for instance, the way mm -hmm. you know what they expect that to do and change the structure the entire fabric of civilization whether it will work i don't know i believe it will based on how it is because if, again we we haven't adopted it yet because everybody's scared of it and they don't know quite what it does they think it's just an exchange just a money exchange thing it's not each one specifically works for a a a type of industry whether it is finance or mortgages or whatever it allows you not to have the middleman. It allows, like, for instance, a house. You want to buy a house. Instead of having to get a mortgage broker and get a lender and get all that stuff, you can do it. You can go directly to the to the the, uh, the owner. You can basically see what it's been, who bought it last, who did this. You can talk. All, all those middlemen go out, so therefore all those jobs get lost. So yep. it has to change. So all we're, we're changing. We don't realize quite how fast at the moment, so every six months, there's a different thing that comes out. In another another ten years, I think we're going to be looking at things that are entirely different how we we used to know them ten years ago. And in these twenty years, we're going to evolve or devolve in a very large way. I think. I remember as a kid, or heck, even up into my uh, my young adult years, you'd go to the grocery store, and the person that was doing the checkout would punch all the numbers in, but they, man, they were going so fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, it was just as fast as doing the scanning, but I guess people didn't want to learn how to do that anymore. They wanted to do it the easy way. And now it's gotten to where, well, we don't need someone at the checkout stand to do it. Uh, the customer can do it themselves. Or you know what? You don't even need to go to the checkout stand anymore. You just walk out the door and everything's exchanged yeah. through the you, scanner. I don't know. Do you remember the first time that you you used a computer or a tablet to check out where you put your signature in it? Uh, first, time I, for me, first time for me was a rental car company years ago, and I'm like, what's this? Because usually you do the paperwork, you go up to the thing. You, but no, now they give you the tablet and you signed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be anybody's signature. They could sign it for you. It wouldn't matter. because It will never look like your regular signature ever. <laughs> but that's the way it was. And, and then it went to, you know, credit cards uh, originally used to have the little piece of paper that would come out and you'd have to sign it, which you still have to do in many places. But now a lot of the time it's the chip. You just touch the yep. chip. You're done. You don't have to sign anything. You're done. Chip, chip. You know, so yeah. it, as I say, it's, it's we're evolving, devolving in a fairly quick rate. Yeah. Everything's got to be faster, 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 faster. Yeah. I mean, you know, you remember as a kid looking through like a Sears catalog and you find something you wanted and mm -hmm. you ordered it and about six to eight weeks later it showed up, but the anticipation would build up before it get there. And now sometimes it's here in the afternoon if you ordered it in the morning, but it's at least here by the next day. It's about immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. And Amazon have done a, an amazing job at, at doing that. And they will probably take over FedEx and USPS. Oh, because sure. you know they they are giving us something we don't have to wait for or pay extremely a lot of you know you go online you take it oh it's here tomorrow you go to usps i mean i you know my events um for my sword experience which is the event company you mentioned 
a lot of the time we ship things using FedEx. FedEx was originally set up so you could immediately send something somewhere and get it done immediately immediately and it would be the next day or two days later i've sent stuff that never even turned up i have events in chicago i did three times not just once three times in chicago it turned up late twice never arrived by the time i had to do it and the third time they lost the package entirely so mm -hmm. to me it's like okay what and instead you've got amazon now who have now bought a fleet of of uh of airlines they base them in atlanta i think it's like 35 uh, uh carriers they've got solely to start taking packages have nothing to do so they're going to take over that that immediate gratification aspect which is what and that's why they're a three trillion dollar company now so you know it's 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 going to change. It's just going to change. And we are gratified immediately. And when that doesn't happen, we get impatient for it. It's immediate gratification. I mean, you know, even in my business, I have to, you know, I have to change the checkout system and, and, um, and the new uh, type of um, uh, coding you have to put in there because it's changed. And, you know, I've... I mean, yeah, it's convenient, but I actually like the human interaction Yes, my wife sometimes she'll get aggravated because I want to go to the checkout line and and talk to the cashier, <laughs> right? Just to talk to somebody different, yeah. And you never know trying to talk to someone and maybe brighten their day, tell them a little joke because you know I love dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> I try to make the the person laugh, and that might make the difference whether they give up on life or not. But we're taking that human connection away. Yeah. And that's a lot of kids today. Uh, the issue there is are the tablets, the the phones and the the tablets that they have because they're taking away the human connection portion of it. Mm -hmm. Kids that sit there at a, at, a, at a table, and I've seen it before where you'll have three people at the table, they're all on their phones, some of them yeah. talking to each other. You know, I'll, 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 I'll go to my son's soccer practice and I put something out to to um remind people of, but i've got three of them standing right next to me i could say here you go but i want to make sure that they all get it and then they reply to me on but they're right next to me you know so, so I'm like, <laughs> i know so, yeah so. i know you'd be in the same household and yeah you text somebody on the other side of the house or whatever instead of just getting up and going and talk to them i see my kids do that kind of stuff yeah. Well, I will say something. My, my wife is really good about making everybody put the phones away when we sit down to eat together. Yeah. And I like that rule. It's look, like we need to talk. Yeah, we have we have the same rule in our house. Um, it was funny because a friend of ours who's my son's godmother, uh, she uh, she said, you know, it's amazing because I she travels and goes to different friends. She had a friend in Florida where. They picked them up at the airport. The kids were in the back on the on the iPads. They went to the house. The kids are on the iPads. They went to the restaurant. The kids took the iPads with them. They're mm -hmm. in the restaurant. They're on the iPads. And she said, "There's no, I can't, I can't connect with them. I can't talk to them because they're constantly on this device." We do we, and she said, "Your kids is different because you don't allow them to be on." My kids are not allowed TV during the week. My son will get on in the morning for about twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. because he's, he gets down before I do. I have to tell him to turn it off because the kids <laughs> are going to do that anyway. Um, you know, a fortnight is something he really likes to do and he really wanted to be doing it. So he got it. But we said, okay, you have the weekend. You can't play it during the week. That's it. But it doesn't mean you'll want the weekend all day. You get two hours per day. That's it. No more. Yes. Because otherwise you get drawn into it. You get sucked into that life and you can't converse and you get with its screen anger too. Mm -hmm. when kids get on this and you get off of it you're not dealing with the person you're dealing with the thing in front of you you're shooting you're diving you're doing whatever you do and you get off of it and you start talking to people the same way you played in the game and i'm mm -hmm. like you, you can't that that's and you get rid of that and my kids are, oh, what am i supposed to do well read a book talk to each other create a game whatever you want to do that's fine but no tv not at the moment you can figure something else out you know so I think it is beneficial to be able to regulate that. Like they have on iPhones. Now they tell you how many hours you've actually been on the iPhone. Or mm -hmm. during the game, how much screen time you've had. Yep. 
I know my grandson is addicted to monster trucks. He's mm. three years old. He loves monster trucks and he loves watching the videos on YouTube about monster trucks. And I mean, his mama lets him watch them, but she has put one of those uh, parental guards on there where it, it only lasts for so long and then it cuts off and you can't turn it back on until the next day. Well, that's actually I'm, really good. Yeah. It's a good idea. You know, that, that, that uh, brings up a question regarding parental controls on devices. I, g I gave my daughter her phone. Uh, she turned when she turned 12, which was last year. Mm -hmm. um, but there was the thing that we control everything on it because it doesn't matter how many controls sometimes you put on it, they can get around them. So you have to monitor that. And her, our neighbor's daughter had the same thing. And she ended up being uh followed by a guy and they had to bring the fbi in because it was online that she's the guy pretended to be a kid you know so you just don't know who it is on there it's scary no. because there are a lot of predators out there we didn't hear about them before doesn't mean that doesn't mean that there are more of them today it just means we're hearing more about it today because of the internet because of, the, of our ability to communicate easier and faster that we're hearing all this information before that information still existed. I'm actually watching Game of Thrones again right now. Oh, and yeah. All the same human elements are in that. Yes, it's a fantasy idea, but imagine the same idea, the same people existing in the Middle Ages or some the wants and the desires and the the nepotism and the, the degradation all still existed then. It just didn't know about it. You heard about it maybe in the village. And that's as far as it went. Didn't go any further. The day somebody does it, you hear about it on, on, across the world. And so you hear more and more and more. You think, oh, my God, it's getting worse. It's not getting worse. It was there all the time. And now you've got to address it. Oh, yeah. Be careful about it. Well, I mean, before, you, you remember there was a time where something that happened in California one day, you might not hear about it until a week or two later on the other side of the country. Right. And then it was we were relying on things like just the newspaper and then we got the news, but now everything pops up on your phone instantly. Anytime anything happens, pops up on your phone that which easy, is good, which is good and bad because certain things oh, yeah. you need to find out about, like uh, storm warning or a kidnapping or something of that nature that, that, that yep. prevents you from getting into that. But then on the other flip side of that is the stuff that you really don't need to hear. The, the, and I think a lot of the time, things like Facebook and other places, um, have allowed people the comfort zone to not have any recourse to what they say and do. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say anything to whoever you want because you're behind a screen. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And therefore that's how we're treating people. I liken life to the freeway. You're on a freeway. Watch how people behave. Do they take the fast lane? Do they sneak down the, the side lane? Are they going to cut you off? Are they going to let you in? That's who they are. That's you, you, that the way you drive and the way you are on the road sometimes is a really good indication of your character. And I can, mm -hmm. can't tell you how many people I come up against or through that, that, like there's a gap in the road. They'll speed up and close the gap because they don't want to get, they don't want to let you in or they won't say thank you when you let them go past or they'll, they'll, they'll you'll be waiting and it doesn't make sense. I'm like, why did you do that? It doesn't make sense. You're not going anywhere. Why didn't you just let this person go? You know, there's just, and that really is a reflection of who are, they are becoming or who they are. Mm -hmm. I'm, I was taught growing up, if somebody let you in, then you give them a little wave or something. Hey, thanks. Yeah. You know, and then they'd wave back. And sometimes I'll wave and say, thank you. And I won't even get the acknowledgement that I, I waved at them. I mean, okay, that's yeah. fine. I don't have to have it, but. But but think of the, what you what we talked about earlier about the energy you're putting out for that. Mm -hmm. When you say thank you to somebody, you're putting the energy out, which is a good energy, saying I I appreciate you doing that. In their car, they're sitting there going, "Oh, that was that was okay, yeah, hi, ha thanks, yeah." On the other hand, you just turn around and just go past them. They're going, right, "You," which then changes their whole being at that moment, and perhaps for several moments later. So the energy that you've put out is now affecting somebody else. 
and that energy they imagine you start it they do you do it they do it to somebody else then they go oh wait a minute i'm going to do the same thing and then they do the same and it, it just snowballs so the positive energy you put out snowballs as does the negative energy well we've gotten to where our whole lives are online and it's no wonder that we're seeing more people with you know mental problems or emotional problems i think we need more human contact and you know we just we're just not getting it it's sad but we'll see, we'll see what the politicians come up with <laughs> i have no faith in our politicians no, but that's anyway. another subject uh <laughs> You know, you had mentioned mentioned uh, your events, and you have one, as I stated earlier, coming to Austin. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I uh, well, I started a company about six, seven years ago called the Sword Experience, mm -hmm. and the same thing as I've been talking today is that you start it on a path, but it, and you wanted to do something, but it kind of evolves based on the decisions or the things that you do along the way, and the sword experience started off with just showing people what it was like to do some sword work. It's now evolved into retreats and uh, events where I actually take people, show them the choreography, show them the safety, uh, put them in a little story, film it and give it to them at the end as a little story. So, and then I've got, you know, Academy events. I've got a star Wars Academy, Well, it's not star Wars. It, I, it, it's, Star Wars esque Academy called VVVI, which we were launching uh, in, um, I want to say May, beginning of May. It's called v Vitae Invertus Institute. Uh, light swords, we call them, laser swords. They're called night lightsabers because we have to stay away from the Disney point of it. But the, the idea right. of a, another world where you can, but the, I, it's all ba based in reality, all martial, it's all a martial system. It's not like you normally see where I, you, you you have all this sword work going on and in lasers and it's all out here. No, this is based on actual techniques. And so, uh, because I come across a lot of Star Wars people who love the idea of it, but they don't know the reality of it. I've heard, I just recently did an event in, um, in California here and a guy came up to me and says, yeah, I've been doing the Star Wars for 15 years and I've been doing Sabre for 15 years. He came into my class. I'm like, you don't know anything. This is nothing you're really your swing is wrong your footwork is wrong all that because it's not based in a true martial art so the the company has grown in that respect where i'm it's also about positivity because my academy events for instance where i i now put i have three four types of events corporate elite convention and academy now our academy events are really about training about physical training it was all, all started off as a physical training thing where you do a workout you learn the technique of the sword and then you put a little choreography together at the end of it so you really learn a lot of the basics that you would learn in a in a in a dojo i then realized that sometimes it was too much to do in a short space of time so i put it together with an elite event i do over a two-day event now where i give them a little bit of that and a little bit of the 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 result because we talked about before about being result oriented Mm -hmm. And being result oriented, people want to see them having achieved something. It's why the belt system in martial art was has been mismanaged for many, many years because everybody wants to get a black belt or a brown belt, etc. But they don't really want to do the work for it. And the teachers and that mm -hmm. guy giving it to them because they're making money off of it. Of course, you know I know I know teachers that say I'm not doing that. I, I people will spend two years on this belt if they don't do the stuff right. Same thing applies to my online academy, which I now have as well where I teach, there are videos for, to, to teach people the basics. And I say to them, you will be a critique. You get three critiques up to a point, but I'm not going to give you the level to move forward until I see you do it correctly. It's your job to work at it. And I, I, I always believe you have to do that work to get better and be better. But that has evolved into things that are good for you in everyday life and not necessary for sword. It's mm -hmm. about your dedication. It's about your determination. It's about you, you being able to physically move. So it's not all about weights and all that stuff. It's about being able to balance, being able to pick something up off the floor, 
all the exercises and that we do in the academy and the, and the online is a lot of that stuff as well. So it's practical, not just because you want to have fun playing with a sword and you want to recreate what you look like in Game of Thrones or on Star Wars, but also <laughs> because it actually does help you move and be physical. So, you know, to that event, that's what I do on the, the elite events I do is what one of the ones I'm bringing to Texas. Uh, to Austin, I've been to I've been to Texas several times, many times. I have great response in Texas, and um, this one is actually um, I always put stories with them, and and I I, I tend to uh, um, like doing that because people like to dress up, they like to have some sort of um, solution yep. at the end of it rather than just uh, sword work. Because I tell people I'm not there to teach you a style. I'm there to teach you the proper footwork, the uh, angulation, the targeting, all that stuff, and have fun at the same time doing it. You're going to have fun doing it. So at the end of it, you go, well, you know what? I actually kind of like doing this. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go with a real teacher to teach me HEMA, which is historically European martial arts, or uh, understand the way of the sword and, and Aida, or do Japanese sword work. Or, and they get to learn that. They get interested in that. I'm just the catalyst for them to do that and have a good time as well as learn specifics. So the one I'm doing in Texas, as I said, I put stories with it and I always look at my location. I was taught when I was doing Highlander, the location is important. It's a, it's a piece of, it's a character in your story. So the location we have um, is actually a brewery and, but it's um it's a big barn. Like a, you'd have like a, a line dance, you know, have a big, huge barn. And I thought, what is it in Texas? I did a little research, and funny enough, I, I, I saw that close by in um, DeWitt County was one of the biggest, actually, I think it is the biggest blood feud uh, out of in, in Texas history uh, mm -hmm. from the 1870s called the Taylor Sutton feud. You can look it up if you want. Um, <clears throat> but um, the story is, you know, what would happen if the Taylor and, uh, and the Suttons had had a truce at the barn and somebody starts to break the truce, what would happen? You know, so we, we, you'll, you'll learn all the choreography and all, all the, 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 the techniques and the choreography and then have fun putting it together at the end that will, will then be filmed. So we're, we're doing that. And it's, it's, uh, uh, it's another fun one. I've, I've had done, done different ones in Texas and they're all on my YouTube channel as well. So, you know, it's about, I want to get people an experience to have a good time. And, and I'd say about, I'd say 85 to 90% of the time they do. You're always going to have people that are going to be dissatisfied. I can't help that. That's just the way it is. And when somebody is, I try and rectify the situation, but it doesn't always, it doesn't always work. You know, some people are upset because they're just upset because they're unhappy with themselves and with life. So yeah. but I can't change that, but you know, I, I do as best I can to actually make people have a great time doing it. Uh, and I enjoy it because to me, you talked about the path. I mean, I have my film side as well, but this still is my film side because I write the scripts. I, I do all the, all the um, shot lists. I film it. I make sure I'm in the editing of it. So I, I am very aware of the creative side of how to put these pieces together. Well, like you said, there's just no please in some people. And I think they're just miserable and they want to make <laughs> other people miserable. Yeah. I, I'm not kidding you. I put up a a, a video, and I I think it was the one. There was a lady that that was dying from a disease, but she was trying to continue to give a positive message and try to inspire other people. And I actually had somebody not only downvote it, but made a, a lewd comment on there. And I'm thinking, what? This lady is got very little time left to live, and she's spending her time trying to help others and you're going to to dislike it and and say something mean i don't get it but yeah. whatever well, i think i think sometimes what happens is and you can also catch people on the bad day you know so i always always give them the opportunity to rethink it i mean there's occasionally certain things i i i remember somebody commented on my facebook page i, I don't usually go on my facebook page i have somebody because you know i've got 200,000 people on this so i, I can't really go on to every comment that people make but it just it sometimes I get feeds that come through, and I saw this comment that said, uh, "Adrian Paul destroyed the Highlander uh, uh, um, thing with the source and Endgame," and I was like, "Hold on a second, you're 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 saying something that you don't understand." I wasn't the producer, I wasn't the director, I didn't write it, I didn't distribute it, 
I didn't do any of that. All I did was act in it. And that really shows something that it's the lack of knowledge somebody has as to thinking the lead actor, and this is what happens a lot in Hollywood, gets blamed if something doesn't work because they've got to blame somebody. Right. Got to blame. But this person, and I and I actually wrote, I said, I'm sorry, but, you know, I told my people, write this, tell them, tell them this, because you're, you're not, you're just being disrespectful to somebody because you have to point it to somebody. You have to be, and I'm like, you don't know what the situation is. So if you don't have something good to say, it doesn't say anything at all. <laughs> you should have said, remember, there can be only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's meet up. <laughs> Any um, movie plans in the near future or TV? I've got, I, I, I don't have any projects right now. I have my film company that we've got. We've actually looking, we're literally waiting to hear back from the financier about a film uh, that we'll be producing uh, next year, uh, this year, actually, later this year, as well as direct. And I've got under the same banner. If this one works, the next one will go, which I'll direct in, which I'll direct. Um, and, uh, but get, again, it's just, it's, it's one of those businesses that one little piece falls out, the whole thing falls. So I can never say, I've been working on this one project for a number of years now. And every time something looks like it's going to move forward, something else falls apart. So, uh, you know, and in my business, you know, I, I talk to my agent sometimes like, well, there's not a lot going on. He said, don't worry. Everybody goes through that. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody goes through it for a period of time. They're not working. And all of a sudden they hit something and they, they're at the top of the, everybody's uh, uh, discussion list again. And, and that's how it works in this business. It's not like being a doctor where, you know, you're constantly doing, you're basically only based on people's opinions. Unfortunately, as an actor, you're only as good and a director. You're only as good as the last project you did. And if you're the if you're the flavor of the month, that's great. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Where you get older, you change the look. The dem demographics change. You're no longer in favor. The next mm. person who is in favor. That's what the agents. You have to understand as an actor that there's no way on earth you're you're majority of the time that your agents and your managers are thinking that it's the best for your career or it's the best for your creative side. No, they have a business. That's why it's called show business. They're going to go with the person that's going to make the money. They've got to live their lives. They've got to pay their rent. So therefore they're going to go with the, with the demographic or the people that will, will supply that you will still be on their list, but you're not as important anymore. Mm -hmm. And as that changes, if you don't get the work, you'll get brushed aside very quickly. Well, I've seen several of your projects where you're the good guy. And then I guess most recently that I, I watched was when you were on uh, on Arrow and you were the bad guy on there. I played, okay, he plays a really good good guy and he plays a really good bad guy. Do you have a preference? or you just... Bad guys are easier because you can do what you want. I, I was actually on SWAT last year and... Um... You know, that was kind of fun um, playing a bad guy as well as a hijacker. But, you know, I the thing about bad guys is you can you you have more freedom to do things. Mm -hmm. But you also but there's never black and white in anything. That's when I, when I play a role, whether it's a good guy, or whether it's a bad guy, it's never black and white. It's always gray. There are things that a bad guy will do because he justifies himself doing it because he believes that's the right path. Is that bad or is that just because he believes it? Hitler didn't think he was a bad guy, right? He was doing it because he believed he was doing this. Is we all look at it and go, the guy's an absolute nutcase, and and and, yeah. and the same thing with the good guys. Same thing with when I played Duncan McLeod. Sometimes he, you did things that you're like, well, eh, that was a little bit on the edge. You know, was that a really good thing for you to have done? Would you have, so would somebody else have taken the same path? You know, uh, should you have? So there's certain things that is, it's never, and that's one of the producers, a guy called uh, Ken Gord on Highland. He, uh, that's what he was always said. He says it's never just black and white; it's always grey, and that's the that's where it's interesting. You know, that's where characters are interesting. You don't quite what, what's it, what's the actually even on Game of Thrones, there's certain characters you think are bad, you kind of feel sorry for them because of the, because of what's happened to them or whether. So you kind of, and then the guys that are good, you kind of see some of the bad things you go and you go, well, I justify that because, you know, he's been good most of the time, but that bad thing he did, chopping off that guy's arm and doing that, oh, it wasn't too bad. So, I mean, there's certain, there's a, the gray area is always much more interesting. 
Oh, do you have you watched Breaking Bad? Yeah. Okay, so you know, here's this character. He's getting into making and selling drugs because he wants to take care of his family. Right. And so you you kind of feel for him in that sense that, uh, you know, he's dying and he wants to leave something behind. But then look at the lives he's destroyed and the people he's had to get rid of. And it, it, like, you know, I can see there's a gray area there, but I'm sorry. Do, making and selling drugs to me is just. It's not a cool thing. Well, exactly. I mean, so so you just justified the the end. The end justifies the means. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I really appreciate you coming back on. And, well, thank you for you know, bringing me on. Hopefully, uh, I get to you. You can come and see my event at some point. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm down the road actually from where you're going. Where you're situated, I think. Um, is that like open to the public or is, or how's that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, I mean, obviously it's, it is a paid event. The, 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 uh, the, uh, is a, for, for watching it for, uh, that amount of time, there is a small fee uh, and to participate, there's a fee as well, but, uh, you can find that on swordxp.com. And, uh, I think it's the, we're doing Austin on the 26th of the weekend of the 25th, 26th of uh, march march we're in march already already oh my gosh you're in march <laughs> crazy yeah, isn't it yeah i know it's just i uh gee, you know i just keep going i'm getting older <laughs> my kids are growing up I keep going <laughs> hey you know you're this age i'm thank you for reminding me it's okay i i, I do know it <laughs> yeah my daughter loves to remind me how old i'm getting and yeah. why do but, they uh, do why do they good do you know you're such and such now? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I, I, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> I haven't gotten senile yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but it's swordxp.com, right? Yeah, swordxp.com. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the in the description so people can just click on it and go to it. And uh, I would love to uh, post the uh, the event as well. So Thank you. yeah. I'm, if you have like a, a banner or something that you could send me, yeah, I would I'll love have, to uh, share that. I'll have uh brand in my office send it to you. And uh, what all social media are you on? Oh, we're on everything. We're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, you know, the sort of experiences on there, the agent Paul official is my own personal uh page. And uh trying to think, yeah, on on uh YouTube, it's the sword experience. And we have like 100, 200, 150 videos on there. Now it's, it's, it's gotten quite big, as I said. It's, and, you know, and, and we're constantly trying to change it and add things. I'm about to release a new podcast called Slam Swords, Lasers, and Movies. It's about, oh, wow. you know, the reality versus the fiction uh, with laser movies and swords. And is, was it correctly done? Did it come from history? Uh, certain things so we're working we, hopefully we're releasing that very soon i've just had some technical issues releasing it because it's also a vlog it's a you know it's a video uh podcast as well so we're releasing on two different platforms so we got that coming out so and there's a bunch of other podcasts on my my channel as well one was, was the hollywood experience where i talked to different actors and directors and and stunt professionals about you know people like bill shatner and and um load loads of people on on that so we've got a lot on the channels it's it's kind of fun to see it have, having grown from what i didn't expect it to be in the first place like i said you know it just changes well if your assistant can send me uh, the link to those i can share those later on when they come out fabulous i will do all right We'd well thank you so out. much for having me and um i wish you all the best uh we're going to go and uh, wrap up because it's again chilly. It's 50 degrees in California. I just can't believe how cold it's gotten this year. Wow. I we, think have, we're... We, we have snow. Like, I'm not joking about 15 miles from us. I, I can, not even that, not even that, like 10 oh. miles away. There's snow on the mountains. You can see them, which is, I haven't seen that since the 80s. Well, speaking of the 80s, I think that's what we're in today. So I, I don't envy you. Are you in the 80s? <laughs> I believe that's what we're. Oh my the lord! Temperature is yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, we're 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 not. <laughs> we're in the fifties. <50s. laughs> but man, uh, again, 
I can't thank you enough for inspiring me and for helping me to uh, to get this off the ground. Just you being on my show before it it really started something for me, and and you've helped not only me but a lot of other people out there. And I I don't know what else to say. No, nothing. Thank you. I I I'm glad I was able to sort of be that catalyst. No, thank you. And I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and come back. And for my regulars, thank you all for making it possible for me to do this. So until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network 